Welcome to Before the Bat, the God Podcast. I'm your co-host, Phil Parrish, and with me as always is... Kelly. Hey! And Tyler. Hey, what's up? Hey, let's jump into this episode. Viper. (laughs) Ah, Viper. I love this episode. I don't know what you thought, but I I thought it was the best one of the series so far. (laughs) Uh, there are points I really like to this episode. I, I wish they hadn't used the other V word quite yet. Oh, I, wish they just, I wish they would have just left it at Viper. And, you know, some sort of hint they're continually working on it. Um, but it was good. I have it playing in the background right now on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty fun. There was a lot of interesting elements I loved about about the whole drug and how it affected people and and the my favorite was the guy the uh guy you know i i I want money for drugs you know i'm not gonna lie i want money for drugs (laughs) (laughs) hey at least he's honest (laughs) that's what my wife says an honest gothamite is hard to find (laughs) unless it's gordon (laughs) yeah but uh... even he's not so honest all the time Exactly. <laughs> I I really I don't know. I think that the more the show progresses, like I when the show was pitched and it started, I was expecting more of a serious, uh, darker drama. But there's parts to it I feel like that could be an updated Batman sixty six. Yeah. Like where it's just slightly camp, slightly over the top, to where I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah, but I don't think you can do dark, 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 dark the whole time. You have even. In anything, TV movies, you have to have some, even if it's like dark humor, you have to have some kind of humor. Oh, play. yeah. Everybody's got to take a lunch. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can't do dark all the time. You got to have some comic relief. <laughs> and that first, um, the first guy who took the Viper and uh, pulled the ATM out of the wall, I said, That's that, awesome. I said it's you, Tyler. I know they called him Benny, but he reminded me of Maxi Zeus just because when he was like, he was talking about, oh, don't fex me, mortal, and... Yeah, like, I thought about that later, I was like, that would be kind of neat, but then he died, and I was like, dang it. <laughs> I bet you that ATM was from Chase Bank. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> uh, we were talking about sound effects, we need a rim shot. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> I love how he, he pulled it out of the wall and carried it like a backpack. That was hilarious. <laughs> I just like how they're like, what do you use to put, take it? You mean he didn't have a car? No, he just ripped it off and put it on his back. Oh. <laughs> kind of like an arrow with the centrifuge. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I wanted to, I was wanted to pull one line from the episode. Can you guess what line I, I found humorous? Hmm. It's a Bullock line. I'll give you a hint. It's it was Bullock. Something about lunch? No, he when they were uh, he goes, "What's altruism?" Yes, I love that. <laughs> you know, like charity. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's just so ironic coming out of Bullock's mouth. Oh yes, oh yes, and and we had a field day on Twitter about the whole Van Gogh moment, you know, the whole ear thing, and and Van Gogh became a running joke line of the episode too. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> just, oh my gosh, just the stuff this episode had was, it was good. Oh, when I was so excited, uh, we had the stuff with Bruce. I got my murder board. <laughs> yes, I saw that, and I was like, opening shot, there's the murder board. And I'm just sitting there like, yay! I want the digital edition online so we can all help Bruce figure this out. Oh. But I swear, we were getting the first early glimpses of him as Batman. It, it oh, great. yeah! And Alfred finally gives up, and he's like, okay. <laughs> this, I like- this, this will be our family time. I like that he said, you know, I don't want revenge. I want to yeah. understand how Gotham works. And that's very much Batman. Oh, yeah. So if he starts now, by the time 
you know, he puts the suit on, he's going to know everything about all of them. Exactly. He's starting us now. Maybe we'll get Bat Teenager. It'll be about Bruce Wayne as Batman as a teenager. Uh, that's the ultimate rebellious streak. <laughs> but I really think because. they should. They should do a digital version of the board. You know, how interesting yes. would it be to read those articles and to see how Bruce is drawing these connections. And, and like I said, we needed a flow chart of all these criminals and stuff. Well, there it would be, you know? Yeah, Fox should get on that because, I mean, you know how much, tra- how much internet traffic they would get to if you updated after every episode? Absolutely. I said the same thing about The Flash, too. They need Barry's burner board, you know? They would be really smart to do that and to to have a contest, you know, help help young Master Bruce connect clues, you know, help him figure out the connection and yeah. and solve his parents' murder and, you know, who's trying to take over Gotham? It just reminds me back when uh, the Dark Knight was coming out, how that that huge viral campaign, and everybody yes. was, like, searching constantly online to find out something for that movie to reveal an image. I'm like... I like your idea, Kelly. That is another on, fun. Fox. They could put they could put fun Easter eggs in in cities too. Oh yeah, didn't they do that for uh, what was it, Amazing Spider-Man? Yes. For what? What movie? You mean that Spider-Man movie that no one's trying to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying it would be neat to be able to you know to generate fan interest is to do. You know, interesting things like that. Because, yeah. like, because their fans aren't the traditional fans. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not the TV. You know, people that sit down and watch TV. They, these are the people that go to cons. These are the people that you know that are the diehard fans that love this show. Do something special for them. I yeah. agree. Let's let's make a a special. You can win a cannoli contest. <laughs> Kelly's poison cannolis. <laughs> Keep your cannoli to yourself. <laughs> but yes, yeah, like like you were saying, put stuff in different cities. I'd love to find Batman stuff in like different cities and like make it a contest online. You know, if someone can guess like the I don't know this what whatever they're gonna do in the season finale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put or the clues together. Do geocaching where you have an app and you go and you go to the caches and you scan a square barcode to reveal maybe part of the murder board or part of something, you know, or clues to the next episode. Oh yeah, you could have a you could have a field day. Be a dark knight detective, everyone. <laughs> hmm. So what so what are your thoughts? We'll, we'll break it down a little bit on Jim this week. Poor Jim. <laughs> it's every episode. <laughs> he thought he was going to get whacked, I think. <laughs> For a few Although, minutes. Oh, I mean, what would you think? you get thrown in the back of a car and get a bag over your head. <laughs> exactly. But he did keep his cool in the restaurant, though, unlike Cobblepot. Well, yeah, yeah. and he, he stood up to him, too, you know? Mm-hmm. Cobblepot can't keep anything together. That's his problem. He runs his mouth too much. Well, and I thought that might get him killed because, you know, here he they knew now that he ratted out fish to the police. So why wouldn't Cobblepot do the same thing to them? Yeah, You know, that's real. why I can't see why they're... I mean, I understand why they're using him, but... I wouldn't think he would be very trusted because. Yeah, but I think Maroney sees Cobblepot as a weapon, and the minute he sees the slightest bit of like he's not on Team uh, Maroney, he's getting put back in the river. I mean, just just like how it ended with he, he was like, "You better have been right about this," and he's like, "Just wait, just wait, just wait," and then it paid off. So I think. And he was sweating bullets. <laughs> He's on thin ice. Like, he doesn't realize it. Oh. A penguin on thin ice. Hey, this is not covering his pebble. <laughs> I saw I saw a uh, weird theory on uh, online. People were saying. About, 
I was going to bring that up and see what you guys thought. What? Take it, take it away, Phil. Is it the one about, is Oswald Cobblepot really the Joker? Yes. Yeah, I've seen that too. And I read that, and I'm like, that sounds crazy. But I was like, is it any more crazier than Tyler's Fish Mooney Joker theory? <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. I will never stand behind Fish Mooney as Joker. I would rather see Cobblepot be Joker, because that would be a... Like that, whoever came up with that has way too much time on their hands, but a nice creative imagination because that would be ridiculously kind of cool. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> they pulled that off or something like it would be really neat to see. Oh yeah, very cool. So, um, who does anyone have any theories about who's behind the Viper drug? No, not yet because because they're they're already calling it like they they're working on making it venom. Yeah. So it, so it completely falls out of where venom was supposed to have come from. Yeah, but with all these show, TV shows, you know, a lot of times they do stray from the creative license. Yes. Which I mean, which is good. They're bringing in Scarecrow. Could it be him? Hmm. He does it's... manufacture chemicals. It's it's a possibility. I mean, I think the fun of it is we have no idea about anything. It's well, so hard. It's so hard to guess anything with this show. You it's gotta ass, you gotta assume that Wayne Enterprises is in it somehow. Obviously. Yeah, and I think like Bruce was like, "Why didn't Wayne Enterprise do anything? Why why can't we?" And then Alfred's telling him, and he's kind of like, "No." I loved how he like cornered the board lady. Oh uh, yeah. And that she, was that was awesome. She thought he was just some little kid, and he's like, well, I would like to speak to the board of directors directly. I really feel like Lucius Fox will be coming on this show sometime soon. I hope so. I like Lucius. Yeah. I but, think everybody does now, because everyone knows who he is, thanks to the films. But I thought it was funny how she was like, oh, well, you know, we have to go through legal precedents and the... Uh, you know, go through an intermediary and blah, 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 when we talk to minors. And I'm like, yeah, right. What minors has the board ever talked to? You're, oh. you know, you're, you're floating a big load of baloney, you know? For real. I'm, I'm just like, they better not be all douchey. Let Bruce in. Yeah. You they, think that, is that, is, could that be the uh, motive behind the Wayne murders? It could maybe people in uh, the company have had had his parents killed because they were getting too close. You know, it's possible. Or maybe another entity, in conjunction with people, you know, somebody masterminding something huge. Yeah, I think there's some corrupt people in the company, but there's somebody outside the company running the show. Yeah. I think it's just going to be one of those, like, it's going to be the Court of Owls. Oh, I hope, I would, that'd be so great. Because you, if, you, if you think about it, and this is my theory, if I'm going to go up against any theory, my theory is that the Court of Owls is coming because they can be part of the government, they can be in the companies, they can be anywhere and everywhere. I'm not trying to quote Brad Quitt from Fight Club, but if you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> then... That's exactly what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> it would make more sense if it was something like that than, like, one person trying to mastermind all of it. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, you guess we'll have to wait and see, but... I'm telling yeah, but, you, Fox Riders. But that's the theory you're going to stand behind? You're not going to gonna... stand behind your Fish Mooney Joker theory? <laughs> no, because I would cry if Fish Mooney was the Joker. It'd be like having, it's like, it reminds me more of, now if she became Catwoman, like the first Catwoman pull out Earth a kid or something, that would make more sense. But Fish Mooney is the Joker, I just want to cry. She, <laughs> she's just, because I like the Joker, and I'm not a huge fish fan. Like, I'm so what you like? What, you like chicken? I love chicken. Let's not even start about chicken. <laughs> Bring on a character called Chicken. <laughs> chicken Sunny. Instead of Sunny Fish Mooney. Chicken, sunny chicken. <laughs> Look out, sunny chicken is coming downtown. 
<laughs> Your goose is cooked. <laughs> Speaking hey. of chicken, did you check out that lobster that Maroney had? <laughs> that have to do with chicken. <laughs> I don't know. It's food on food. <laughs> <laughs> that lobster was rather terrifying, actually. It was gigantic. The lobster that ate Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> It, it sounds like it should have been an episode of 66. <laughs> but I don't know, just just the way uh, Cobblepot's getting beat up by everyone, I think that lobster is in the next one is ready to kick his butt. <laughs> Man, it is killing me. Like Every time I think Oswald's doing something sweet, Oswald's going to do this, he runs his mouth and gets beat up. But you know, that's what's going to drive him. Oh, yeah. That's exactly oh, gonna... what's going to make him snap. Oh, Even more snap. than he already has snapped. <laughs> Un- unresolved anger. Yeah, he's he's going to lose it on somebody. And, I mean, he's already brutally murdered, you know, how many people? Uh, <laughs> A lot. Well, we know he's the gonna... frat guys didn't get out alive. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's just going to really lose Well, and then there's the guy at the pier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna go completely psychotic. Cause he's not gonna be able to deal with it. You know? I think, I think he's almost there now. Yeah. I mean, they even, like, I thought it was funny how they're like, don't they call you Penguin? Yeah. yeah he's that me. Like, <laughs> he's just gonna, he's just gonna own it. Like, I, I see a scene coming where he's just like, don't call me Cobblepot or Oswald. He's like, I'm the penguin, and then stab somebody. Maybe, like, maybe, yeah, maybe when he uh, kills Fish Mooney, she'll be like, Oswald, please. And he'll be like, no, there's no Oswald. I'm the penguin. Only, or only Oswald's Cobblepot. dead. Oswald's yeah. dead, remember? I'm the penguin. Yeah, well, and Rory told him he should like that name. It's a good yep. name. I like it. <laughs> I'm game. Be the penguin. Live it up. Always take the advice of the vi- of the violent mob boss. That's right. <laughs> mm. There was like a a lot of stuff going on, but like you know, I I still stand by. I feel this show is moving more to ensemble cast than direct main character. Yeah. Yeah. I think they've realized that their strength in like. Numbers? Yeah, pl- plus especially with some of the more out there characters like Cobblepot and Selena Cow. Right, right. They did a lot with, uh, what do you call it? Just this episode, I mean, there was no Barbara. I know, she never leaves that apartment. Yay! <laughs> she didn't even make it in the show. I know, she I don't think she, she got a mention. Just... She got a mention. Yeah. Yeah. But that's it. So I mean, uh, I, like after after their huge falling out last week, you know, I'm thinking they would have something with a scene of them, and I mean, they had uh, what do you call it? They didn't even really have Montoya in in this no, I don't episode. Think they weren't in it. No. So I mean, you know what? It was a good episode. It's just you got I mean, Selena Kyle. Back. You got a few minutes of Selena. I will say that I like that Nigma got more out of this episode. Yeah. This is the first episode where Nigma really got a scene instead of a cameo. Yeah, oh, he was all excited about Viper. And I totally got a kick out of the the whole, you know, they they crave dairy products. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I get the idea of, you know, there there is some basis in science, you know, into what they're saying. It's interesting. <laughs> and that's why they crave dairy products. It's, it's burning so, the calcium. Yeah, it's but, just so, so, what does he say? Not incredible. Um, interesting, isn't it? I can't remember how he... He says fascinating. Fascinating, that's it. Yeah. So, he, he, he just has, he's, he's, he's really intrigued in how this works, and you can see his little mind going, man, I think he's the total, the, the scientist that, is in science for science's sake, in a way, you know? Like, he could easily lose his grasp on right and wrong because he's into the science. 
Because he thinks it's cool. It's puzzling, you know? Yeah, exactly. Throws out giant questions. Oh. (sighs) Ouch. It's a mystery. (laughs) I'm going to start pulling out that big purple suit with all the question marks here pretty quickly. Green suit. Green suit. Well, there was... What, didn't have purple in it, too? Yeah, I think it was green, green and purple. purple. Yeah. It was green with purple accents. Yeah, it was lovely. Well, you don't know what he does at home. <laughs> I, was, I just wanted him to walk in with, like, a green tie and something like that. Just come in with, like, a nice green suit one day and he make a, a green, joke. Yeah, he wears, like, a green fedora sometimes. He gets to wear that. It would be very interesting, like, or just walk in with like the big book of riddles or something. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> like, what are you reading there? Name it. It's a riddle book. I'm good at riddles. <laughs> or brain teasers, a you know, book of brain teasers that he does in between, you know, jobs in the lab. One hundred and one riddles to leave at crime scenes. <laughs> I like, you know, more <laughs> more of the. Uh, Hey, you know what this is? Or you ask questions, and they're like, "No." Oh, I, oh, I could, I could, I could get that every week of uh, Eddie going. Well, you know what this is? And Bullet going, "Yeah, dumbass, I know what it is." <laughs> <laughs> but what's altruism? <laughs> <laughs> that would be really funny. It's just so so funny because it's so foreign to Bullock. Oh, yeah. The yeah, whole like, concept people, is so foreign. People are nice just because? <laughs> yeah. And didn't Bullock get thrown around again this episode? He was chasing his lunch. That's <laughs> right. Hey, it's lunch! <laughs> He's like, call 911. Don't, don't yeah, come you, in here. We're on You don't lunch. have to jump every time you hear a ringing bell and you're on lunch. Somebody <laughs> die in here? No. We're homicide. Call 911. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he told him how, how he had to have his hamburger, too. Oh, yeah. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Bullock loves lunch. Yes, he does. And coffee. <laughs> Surprised he's not uh, pulling donuts out every week. <laughs> now... I want to know what all the stuff was that was breaking in in Gotham PD. Because, you know, there was a whole lot of crashing going on in there when they're bringing all these people in that are on this drug. But what really broke? Oh, you mean in, actually in the... Uh, yeah, in the I mean, building. you hear all this stuff getting trashed. And then you're kind of like, okay, what was that? They probably broke some desks, and then, like, with the ATM guy, they finally picked up a desk, and then their bones, there was a bro- bone snapping. <laughs> could nothing, be. Was, nothing was as good as the old guy who, like, freaked out. On oh, yeah. Bullock. The old guy was good. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It wasn't he throwing Bullock around again? <laughs> I love when people throw Bullock around. <laughs> I, like, I like the gal in the, in the precinct, too, that looked like she was from uh, uh, Monster High. Oh, yeah. She really did. Looked like she was from Monster High. <laughs> was that the hooker from the street b- before when they? Yeah. Him? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. And then she just like disintegrates. <laughs> <laughs> but it takes her a second. If you watch that scene, it's so funny because it's like her arm breaks, and then she has another break, and then she just kind of turns gray and poof. <laughs> But it takes like 30 seconds almost, it seems like. It's hilarious. Yeah, and Bullock's like, oh, well, why don't we just wait a couple weeks and let these, you know. Yeah, let's let all the bad people kill each other out. Good job, <laughs> Bullock. Because that always works. Why are you a cop? <laughs> that's what, that's what, I mean, it, that, honestly, that's what I feel like. You just want to be a cop so you can be a dirty cop and get extra money on the side. That's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll take care of that later. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm on lunch. I'm back from lunch. I'm on dinner. <laughs> uh, let me go talk to these hookers. Let me go have a drink with fish. Oh, 
we talk about fish. <laughs> Can oh my! <laughs> as uh, th- as we started last week, this is our uh, what? What do we call it? The, our uh, the sh- fish in the aquarium. The fish fry. Portion of the show. The fish fry. <laughs> Don't call me mama. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and really, she. I mean, she picks this girl who can barely sing to learn to sing a really beautiful Italian aria. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know she's not there. You know, she's not there to sing. She's there to seduce uh, Falcon. Yeah, but... Come on, like... They could at least get a better singer. Well, I think that was part of the whole point, though. I think they didn't want her to be a beautiful singer because... To be too professional, it would seem too set up. It would seem contrived, yeah. They wanted somebody that... And and she, if you remember during her audition, you know, she she was kind of like, Fish was very nonchalant about this gal. At yeah. First. But yeah, you was, think about it, was, it, she picked her out because she had to look like his mother did. And she liked her seduction skills better, too. Exactly. Yeah. All I know is if I heard someone singing something that I loved and they sucked, I'd be mad. I'm like, stop singing my song. I just think the creepy part is Falcone's interested in, uh, yeah, interested in her after he says, you remind me of my mother. Yeah, they're Norman Bates. <laughs> <laughs> well, and how many years difference is there between those two? Oh, my heavens. Oh, yes, because uh, no rich guys are ever with younger women. No. Oh, no. No, it's just well, kind of creepy. I was waiting for her line, oh, thank you. You remind me of my grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> and he's like, "You're gonna be swimming with the fishies." She's like, "No, I work for her." I already do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already sleeping with the fish. Thank you. Did you? The final scene, though, totally. Well, I shouldn't say the final scene. The final fish scene totally creeped me out, though. Oh my goodness, totally creeped me out. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even remember because I think I might have just blocked it out of my mind. That's probably not a bad thing. Yeah. Oh. Okay, wait, no. Oh, with the Russian guy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the Russians. Can we? Can we please not? Can we? You know, make something to make this people group not look bad. Russians are always in. Like they're never a hero. They're always the villains. But like, we need a mobster throwing the Russians. Do you think the Russians, do you think that storyline's going to, uh, are they going to bring in KG Beast? Possibly. I mean, I know the Russians have tied to Black Mask. Yeah. So, I I like this episode because I liked more of Bruce and Alfred. Uh, oh, yeah. I really liked that aspect. This was the best Bruce we've seen since the show started. Yes, and I think I find more of that interesting than a lot of the other stuff. Yeah, I wish we could get more Bruce. I understand why we can, but I just wish we could see more Bruce. And it was nice to see how his mind works. Yes. Or it's starting to work. Yeah, and then and then in the end to see, you know, Alfred is, for all intents and purposes, his father figure, or one of them. You know, I think Gordon is in there, too. While he's not there directly all the time, he is definitely a father or authority figure to him. Mm -hmm. But to see Alfred, once he's realized that, you know, Bruce may be on to something here. Something isn't right. To see him encourage him, you know, sit down and start to help him. that, That was a really cool moment. Yes, it was. And I really like to see more of Bruce and Alfred this season than maybe next season. There's less. Like they like we talked about before, they go away. Mm-hmm. They leave Gotham or something. But like you really start to see their partnership, their pairing build up. Yeah. Well, yeah. And did you see anyone see the article that uh, they cast Leslie Tompkins? Yes, I was getting ready to bring that up too. <laughs> <laughs> Morena or... Yeah, I thought that was a very interesting casting choice because I've always been quite... I love that she voiced Talia in Son of Batman, and I always thought she'd make a great live-action Talia. 
<laughs> so for her to come on as Leslie Tompkins, I'm like, did you not learn anything last time you worked on a Fox show? Seriously. Come on. <laughs> I'd be like, no, Fox. No. So Bruce will be getting a mother figure. Oh, boy. Hey, you know, you know what would be awesome is if Dr. Tompkins has another child that she looks after who wants to be a doctor one day. Oh. And his name's Tommy. And he lives next door. Who? Tommy. Uh, I'm teasing. Dr. Uh. Who. <laughs> uh. Oh, man, we really need a rim shot. Please. <laughs> I'm just saying there are multiple ways to bring in some characters. And we're going to bring in Leslie, which is great. As I said, I don't really. I feel like Lucius isn't far behind. Um, I saw today. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name correctly, but the guy who's playing Harvey Dent, like a little clip of him. Yeah. When he, when he shows up. Oh yeah, that'll be interesting uh, if he starts going after Maroney. Uh, it's like it's like a, I almost feel like it's a two-part show. You have oh, this is all working without Batman, but this is all good, and then you're like, wait a minute, Batman's the kid. Yeah, yeah, I I I love the show, but I, that that's what I was even thinking this week. I miss Batman just because some of those scenes with Maroney in the restaurant, you know, Batman would have come crashing through the front window. Take out all Maroney's guys, just like get the beginning of Mask of the Phantasm. Yep. And he would have had Maroney face down in his pasta or whatever and be like, <laughs> Arkham, forget about it, and then just disappear. Well, I mean, the more I watch him, like, it would have been neat if somehow they, they structured the show, like we talked about before, so that it's a it's like Batman something, he's not around, mm -hmm. and we don't know why, so the cops are dealing with things in a crime-filled Gotham. But then you have all these flashbacks that maybe Alfred's happening or other characters happen, and it's telling the story of young Bruce and flashbacks. Not to call back how Arrow does their island flashbacks, but it's something in that vein. Yeah. I'm glad we're off the island. Uh, are we ever off the island? We're just on a bigger island called a continent. Yes. But I, I don't, like I said, like, I get really excited, like, oh, I love young Bruce and Alfred. Then we flip over to every other character who's an adult all grown up. Like, I love how these characters are all older than they're supposed to be. Yeah. But, um, like, Har Harvey Dent, do you think he's going to be an ally to Gordon? You know what? I'd like to see some more Dent. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see Dent not rush into Two-Face. Yeah. But, no. but, you know, not make it so apparent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I even like he's already be a district attorney, which is cool. I was hoping he'd be like a law student, or make him a little, a little younger, you know. Yeah, but maybe but, maybe he'll be an ally to Gordon because you know, like in some of those year one stories, it was like an alliance of Gordon, Dent, and Batman. Right. I I hope they take their time because so far they've given us a lot really quickly. Yeah, I don't. Th I think a lot of these characters aren't getting the time that they should because they're throwing so much at us. Like Selena Kyle, there's so much more, so much t more time they could give to her. But well, I think they're. I think they're taking their time and doing her a little bit at a time. Um, and and I really hope that they start doing that with more characters where maybe we don't get such character dense episodes. You know, where we've got twenty characters in one. Mm -hmm. You just focus on one character, or or two. You know, give us give us some development. I mean, I understand you have to start out the universe and you have to throw a lot of characters out there so people understand the players. You know, some of the main players that can go longevity over time. But now that you know you've got you've got time, slow down. And start giving us more backstory to these characters. I mean, obviously, a lot of people have read the comics. A lot of people, you know, are familiar. But there are also a lot of people who aren't um, as familiar with the origin stories. I mean, goodness. Slow down, the Gotham writers. Let us enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we need time to digest. To, to understand why 
the connections are the way they are. You know? Don't rush. Don't rush, Gotham writers. Romance us. Come on. <laughs> well, we, if we want to understand the city, like Bruce does, yeah. then, then we have to understand how everything is interconnected. And we need an online murder board. Well, yes. that would be nice. It would that would be very nice. The bus. Well, so, and... I mean, they could do so much, like, little, like, Riddler questions and stuff from Nygma's crime scenes. and Like, I don't know, I'd like to see Nygma show up more as, like, the CSI-type character they're making him. Like, on the crime scenes. Um, like, you know, do a, do an episode, like, where it doesn't have Cobble Park. Because I feel like he's coming out more of the prominent character of this series than anybody else. Right. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing would be nice, too, if they do the online murder board is, or the connection board, you know, with all the ugliness in the city is, okay, who is this guy? Who do they work for? You know, and have those clues be in those articles. So, even if it's not the main story, if you're trying to figure out who somebody is, you can go to that board and find them if you look hard enough. So that you can get the connection. Because, you know, sometimes, quite frankly, there's so many henchmen and stuff. I can't keep track of them all. Yeah, they could yep. they could put everyone's profile on there and put like the crime, the rap sheet. Yeah, the yeah. Shot. Half I think they, they, they could have held off Maroni coming in for a while and made like a really big deal, like Maroni's come back to town. Like this is gonna shake things up because it's like they threw out Falcone, then all of a sudden like and now Maroni. Yeah, it seems like they threw out Falcone and he was going to be this big character, which I'm sure he is, but now it seems like he's not even getting as much screen time because Maroney's in there. Yeah, and you've got, and then you've got Fish wanting to take over and she's in cahoots with, you know, other people and it just, it gets kind of confusing. And it would just be really nice to be able to go, okay, you know, this, this Russian guy, who, who is he? You know, what's his background? What What's he been arrested for? What, you know, mm-hmm. let us see where he's coming from. And that gives you more, t- more character development without having to devote on screen time. Exactly. And they get more internet traffic. And I don't know. I don't see how this is. <laughs> I don't see how this is bad for anybody here. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, I mean, Fox, do you need help with this? <laughs> we'll help. <laughs> It costs money to develop, I get that, but, you know, it, it could be a big boon to to the series. Yeah, but, I mean, they, I mean, between advertising and stuff, especially now, like, I'm pretty sh- the ratings are pretty good, correct? Yeah. Yeah, the ratings have been pretty good. They, they've held their audience pretty well. And uh, I, I definitely think it would be worth it for them, and it's something that they can grow over time. Oh, yeah. You know? Could last the length Add of the show, yeah. Every episode. I mean, we may end up in the end having a whole room with walls covered in, you know. <laughs> or in the end, it could turn into the Batcave. Who knows? <laughs> but it's it just... totally, I mean, it totally could. Like, there could be things like there's hidden Easter eggs they put in each episode. Yeah. That you got to go online and try to figure out if you saw the one. Uh, where was it? What was it? Yeah, like some, some people aren't familiar with the comic books. Like, Kelly, would you like all the Easter eggs put on there that... You know, tell you Ab- who's what. And... Absolutely, because I find myself searching for them. You know, I it, there'll be times when I'm going, okay, I don't know what this is, but I know it's something. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I go digging and looking for it, and sometimes they're not easy to find. You know? It would just be really nice if, if those were available. And, and maybe if something references a specific comic or something. I mean... They wouldn't have to have it in the article, but, like, have a link to it at the bottom. So people like me who inquiring minds might want to know can go find that book and pick it up, you know, mm-hmm. and, and get some more background. Like, the con recommends reads, you know. Yeah. Or, you know, or it could be fun, too. You know, Bruce is eventually going to have to go to, I'm sure, the library to look up, or, or the courthouse to look up public records. You know, you could do that, the same thing. You know, have all kinds of files in there that you can get to that, you know, Bruce's access. You could do just, you could have a field day. Yeah, the very first file in, on there should be, like, the murder of the Waynes. Mm-hmm. 
it it and have the crime scene photos and the and you know where maybe you can magnify the photos and try to see you know it would be just really cool. But uh, before the bat listeners, uh, you have a great comic book source. Just get a hold of us on social media, and Tyler and I will answer any comic book question you have. <laughs> yes, I read a lot. So do I. And I have knowledge. And I have comic book knowledge. <laughs> yeah, let me rephrase that. I have knowledge of comics. I'm always up for learning more. So you are more than welcome to go, hey, Phil, recommend a good series? Phil and I even talk back and forth to each other about what we, hey, you should read this, you should read this, let's read this. Yeah, we go we go back and forth anyway, so jump in, listeners. <laughs> and I hope that, uh, I hope that Gotham goes from kind of the way Arrow and the Flash are going, and I hope they do a between-season comic to go with the show. Yeah. That would be cool. Like, I want, like, still, what, what great war did Gordon fight in? You know, they've never really gone, like, was it a police thing? Was it, like, military war? Like, they've never touched on his experience. Mm-hmm. All he said was that was war. It was the war with his fiance. He said, put on some pants and get out of the apartment. <laughs> well, he won that war one week. <laughs> war is a dirty place, son. <laughs> But I mean, it, it would be really neat because you could fill in you could fill in character backstory, kind of the same. You could, like, you know how Arrow did is they had a you know the time jump in between. There was a small gap, and the comic book filled in that time and gave lots of details that they didn't take screen time, you know, for. Mm-hmm. It could just be really cool, and Gotham is the perfect show to do it for. I mean, my this goodness. Was- so many characters, you could do a prequel story for each, almost every character, and give us more of where they came from, like Bullock, you know, yeah. Gordon, just Gotham before Gordon. I think the point of this whole conversation is that we love the show, and we're all hungry for more. Yes! yes. More content, just, please. Just like Phil and I. Phil and I are starting... We want to podcast about Batman and Gotham with Kevin Smith. He said today that he hasn't watched Gotham yet and is going to binge watch the first ten episodes. We want to talk with him after he binge watches these episodes. That would be awesome. Anyone, anyone, so, if, anyone within the sound of my voice, Pester Kevin Smith. <laughs> it's at that Kevin Smith, and you can find me at, at JTY Patrick. And me at, at Nightwing PDP. And attach, at- attach all of us and at before the bat. And just, you know, we'll just every day we'll message out. Um, and just keep repeating. You know, let's just keep let's keep it going. Yeah, I did it from my personal Twitter. Maybe we should do it from the show Twitter, so I say we just pass it around. Do it from our ours, the show repeats everything. Let's Help us spread the word, people. Before the bad fans, help us go viral. <laughs> Make I'll us be a happy. nuisance. <laughs> Even if he was like, I can't do it, guys. Just just that recognition, I'd be like, okay. Kevin Smith knows I exist. All right. Come on, Tyler, you'll get this reference. Come on, Kevin. Come on, talk the, talk Batman with us. Help us punch evil in its turkey neck. Uh, I'll even wear my Jay and Silent Bob Batman, Batman t-shirt. Snoogans. Snooch <laughs> to the niche. It's like for real. We can talk everything. <laughs> Let's talk Gotham and the absence of Batman, but the greatness that is Batman. Yes. Well, it makes you realize, you know, this show. It's funny because you don't really think about how how bad Gotham. You know, I mean, you thought about it a little bit. When you were watching the Batman movies and and everything, but it just makes you really realize how how corrupt a city can be without hope and authority and mass vigilantes. <laughs> well, that's hope. 
Because, you know, the police are so corrupt that the people don't have any hope. I really want to see more, like, something with the Gotham people. Like the people of Gotham, and where we just really see them, like, you know, talking trash to cops, or just talking trash about living in Gotham, period, anymore. What, getting high and ripping out ATMs isn't enough for you? Yeah. But see, that that's the people you expect it from. I'm talking about, like, the normal, average citizens who are just fed up with their city crumbling, their city falling apart. You know, who just who just can't like who want to leave but can't right now. They're all hiding. Well, I think it'd be interesting to see too. You know, there's got to be. I mean, you've seen. You we saw a couple wide shots of just how run down Gotham is getting. You know, the buildings and stuff. There was a wide shot yeah. this week that really kind of pulled that. It reminded me of Detroit, but um, it would be interesting to see. You know, maybe have Alfred and Bruce driving in the car and they go past the neighborhood that's just blighted. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. That's... For 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 Bruce, you know, Bruce wants to help. I mean, look, he, he you know, gave the kids uh, that, that were going to Arkham clothes and stuff because he wanted to do something to help. He wanted to make a difference. And that could be the start of... You know, he's going through these blighted neighborhoods and stuff. Bruce is famous for his philanthropy. You know, helping people. And and not just giving people things, but helping people help themselves. Yeah, that could be an interesting part of the story where he's giving money and giving money and he just doesn't see things getting better. And he's exactly. Like, well, then exactly. what can I do? Like, right. what, what else can I do? What have I done? Well, what has helped me? You know, you look at it. It's it's Alfred and Gordon mentoring him that's helping him. And I think also uh, helping him is like, he's like, you know what? I've had my head in the sand long, and I'm a kid, but I've had my head in the sand long enough. It's time to, you know, look up, look around, see what's around me. It's mm-hmm. his empire he needs to take shape on. Yeah, I'm not a kid anymore. You know, the world isn't this happy-go-lucky place. Well, I am a kid, but <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not I, I I don't have my blindfolders, you know, my blindfold on. I'm yeah. I've I've opened my eyes to I, reality. Yeah. Well, I think emotionally, he's not a kid anymore. Yeah, I'm waiting for kind of that type of moment where, like, the dialogue with Alfred is, you know, the boy Bruce died that night. That's not me anymore, or something like that, where Alfred's trying to still savage his childhood. And he doesn't, like, it hasn't got to the point where he realized his childhood's over. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get that until clo- the end of the series, probably closer. I think it's going to be interesting when we see Bruce and Selena interact. I think we're going to get a really interesting conversation kind of in that vein, though. You know, you think about it. Oh, Selena's yeah. been on her own for how long? You know, she... She is, her eyes are open. You know, she knows what goes on. And how they're two very similar, I mean, their stories are very similar, but they took very different paths. And I think that will be eventually a very, very interesting conversation to see. Yeah. I agree. I'd like to see them meet sometime. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they're saving that for something probably what mid season or end of the season. It would be great before the mid season break. Yeah, like she's like I don't know, maybe she shows up at his window like right at the end of the episode. Yeah, exactly. It's like we have to talk. <laughs> or you have something as great as Bruce revisiting his the the site where the murder happened and she's hanging out in the alley. Yeah, like or the, the classic, he goes to the alley to put the roses on their spot where they died, and she's there. Yeah. See, I was thinking something like that. I was thinking that's more like a season two. Yeah. Because you it has to, to be an first anniversary. Yeah. yeah. That would be cool. It's coming. There's a lot of ways to do things. So it, it's they've, coming. They've got so many characters that they can change how they do things with that... It boggles my mind, really. Yes, many, many characters. 
So, does anyone else have any other thoughts on this episode? And if you do, and you're a listener, you should definitely tweet at us. Or send us email. Yes, email, uh, social media. I mean, if you have any call questions about how it, uh, everything hooks into the comic books, and like I said, me and Tyler can hook you up there. If you're just wanting to get back into reading and you're not sure where to get back into it, give us a shout. And also, our, our blog, that will go up on Monday probably, I wrote on uh, Viper Venom, so... Very cool. And if, and if you're not familiar with it, young listeners, Venom is the drug that eventually is most famous for Bane giving him his super strength. And so, just in case you didn't know. You know Bane from the... <laughs> yes, you know Bane from the Dark Knight Rises movie. Of course. Hey, that's a whole different Bane. I'm not going to acknowledge the other Bane. I'm talking animated series Bane. In comic book, yeah. Hello, Mr. Wayne. I look at this podcast just like Stan Lee looked at comics. This could be someone's first podcast. It very well could be. Every cast can be someone's first. You always remember your first. (laughs) So is that it then? I think so, my friends. I think so. All right, let me do the show's uh, social media. Like we said, get a hold of us. Uh, our email is before the bat at gmail.com. On Facebook, we're before the bat, the Gotham podcast. Twitter, we're at before the bat pod. Instagram, before the bat underscore flash arrow pod. And Tumblr is before the bat slash flash arrow pod. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, make sure to join me. During the the uh, episode, I'm live tweeting from the Bat Cave at Before the Bat Pod, so come join me. And you'll probably see me because I'll be tweeting at the same time, and Kelly might favor or retweet or tell me to stop at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> she might be really Tyler. Enough bad fish Mooney jokes. <laughs> Lay off the fish. <laughs> it stinks. And I'm telling you, I was serious last week. My wife made me tuna sand tuna. Uh, after we were done last week, so uh. it was hilarious and delicious. <laughs> Your wife's pregnant. You should be making her tuna. That's I would. Right. I do make her stuff, but I was recording with you guys, and she went downstairs to get something to eat. That's great. Supporting the podcast. <laughs> One mouth at a time. One tuna <laughs> at a time, yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you just want to give out your uh, personal uh, Twitters? Uh, yeah, once again, you can find me at JTY Patrick. And I can be found at SuperSquint. That's S U P E R S Q U I N T. And I am at Nightwing PDP. And remember, listeners, get those names, get those Twitter handles in front of Kevin Smith. And... You will be seeing us retweeting and just keep the retweet going. Yeah, you could find this this podcast and our uh, companion blog at uh, southgatemediagroup.com and see our swanky page on iTunes it's very cool oh yeah alright and leave us a review on iTunes if, if you like the show tell us what you want to see talk to us people talk to us and please make sure to download the episode because if you play it on iTunes it doesn't count so download please we like it we enforce you know you downloading it to your mobile devices and uh, listen to us while you drive or while you're out jogging or at work like I do. We want to promote a healthy lifestyle while enjoying the podcast. (laughs) And you know what other, what else is a good show on uh, Southgate media group, Kelly? What's that? Channel 52. Uh, Yes. Hey, imagine that with our own uh, Tyler and our friend Willis. Woohoo. And that is a show that is coming together. If you just like DC, all things DC, and want to know what the heck we're talking about with DC, that's the show. Oh, and the dogs are barking now. The dog agrees. (laughs) Quiet, Crypto. Quiet. (laughs) But yeah, as a comic book fan, I must say, they know what talking about. All right, so is that it then? Uh, yes, sir. Well, you know what we have to say then. Same Same bad bad time. time. Same Same bad channel. channel.
to Dot Moon Podcast. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. (laughs) Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world. you want to come with us because if you do then i should warn you you gotta hear all sorts of things ghosts from the past aliens from the future the day the earth died in a ball of flame it won't be quiet it won't be safe and it won't be calm but i tell you what it will be the trip of a lifetime a trip what are you talking about charles this is a podcast and, and what is that accent okay never mind listen everyone i'm jesse jackson And I'm one of the hosts of our Doctor Who podcast, Next Stop Everywhere. My overly dramatic friend who thinks he sounds like the Doctor is Charles Skaggs. And he is trying to tell you how much we love Doctor Who. So much so that we've started this podcast. And we're going to discuss new episodes, old episodes, news, anything and everything that makes Doctor Who awesome. So we hope you'll check us out on southgatemediagroup.com or look us up on iTunes. So, Charles, anything else to add? All of time and space, everything that happened or ever will, where do you want to start? (sighs) 